Hey, Stalker. Tired from a long journey, I assume? Why not sit here and rest by the campfire? Kick back for a bit, have something to eat, and share some stories with the guys. You've undoubtedly seen a lot in your wandering. All right, kids, gather round. I'm going to tell you a story about a real skinwalker, a Nagoshi, not a warlock or a Wittigo. This story should hopefully help in illustrating why you cannot kill a skinwalker. Why that stanky ass bear you saw in your backyard was not a skinwalker. And why if you ever meet a skinwalker, what you do is hide. Try your best to not breathe too loud. Stay behind cover if you have it. Just try to remember that you are functionally insignificant to this thing unless it takes notice of you. And you really don't want it to take notice of you. Ready kids? Be me, visiting a friend in a small town W slash reservation far up north, like way up north, northern Canada north, outside Nagoshi territory. Friend is involved with a girl from the reservation. Long story, but the important part is I'm there because I like both of them and they need help. I stay in town, he heads out to the reserve. Small underscore local underscore bar dot jpg comma chatting up locals trying to find a place to stay. Wind up talking to an older guy who seems to be a regular. Tells me not to bother over at the reservation. Something has them all riled up right now. Assume it's just a sheet show involving the social situation of my friend, but don't say anything. Old guy says he went to visit a friend on the reservation two days back. Almost got shot in the woods on the way in. His friend won't explain why, just tells him to stay away for a bit not to go out in the woods too far from town. Naturally, this makes me concerned for my friend. I'm typing this up now, we'll continue shortly. Call up friend, this was flip phone days BTW. Friend explains that everyone is acting all cryptic over there too. Friend came here with the hopes of getting GF's parents to let her leave with him. They're actually pretty sympathetic, but won't let them leave yet. Something is going on, chief and elders meeting every night. Everyone staying indoors whenever possible. Everyone refuses to explain, avoids the topic. Friend thinks it's some cultural thing, and he's white. So friend, BTW, is a pretty good guy. Aside from being a bit soft on the social justice side of things, in particular, cultural appropriation, etc. Which has actually served him well in getting this GF so fair enough. Friend is content to sit tight for a bit. So back to Amidar GIF. Find a room in someone's basement. Look around town for odd jobs to pay back the guy whose basement I'm occupying. Old man I met at the bar wants some help clearing trails. Lives outside town, opposite direction from the reservation. End up spending a lot of time drinking with him at the bar over the next week or so. Getting to know people, that kind of sheep. About a week and a half since I got there. Phone rings, Bob ANG, it's friend. Sheet is going down at the reserve. Hangs up without explaining everything. Hear police sirens. Hear about it all the next day at the bar. One of the reserve's elders found dead. Absolutely eviscerated. Official statement. Bear, word on street at bar, alcohol poisoning, and the chief covered it up W slash machete. Word from friend. Next day. Something spooky. Story friend told me. Town has been having problems with mutilated animals the last few weeks. Medicine man says something is really bad but can't say what. Elders think it's some ducked up youth. One elder agrees with medicine man. Went on a trip south when younger, learned from a relative, relative via white people, about local legends down there. Heard a story from the 20s about the last time a real skinwalker was seen. Thinks this is one of them. Other elders dismiss this, but medicine man is hesitant. Nagoshi doesn't fit with local beliefs. Not quite anyways but there are threads of something there that make it hauntingly familiar. Elder decides to go out at night, try a ritual to communicate with it. Found ritual online, apparently at the local library computer in town. Dial up noises, duck well, goes out that night, dies horribly. Remaining elders slash chief slash medman, now very concerned. Everyone on reserve on high alert, no idea what to do. So back to me, sound. Weebm. Mention all this to the old guy friend at the bar. Looks uneasy. 
grumbles some racist sheep, agrees with alcohol analysis. Seems like he's trying to convince himself. Drink a lot that night. Two more nights, talk to friend by phone when I can. Everyone on reserve tents, agitated. Two close calls where people almost shoot each other going over to one another's houses. Does not spread much to town, except old man seems distracted next few days. Almost takes his own leg off with chainsaw. Ask him what's up, but he dodges the question. Next day there's another body, this one is closer to town. Local police chief actually sees it, apparently didn't see the last one, and freaks out a bit. Official word from police, maybe a mountain lion, duck we don't know. Work at bar, serial killer on reserve, word from friend. Guy had been out gathering wood close to where the first guy bit it. Houses were actually close together, near the edge of reserve lands. Lots of blood found near the house. Body was probably moved to where it was found after the guy was killed. Getting spooky, gif, sort of want to leave. But I'm here for friend and his GF. Parents are leaning towards letting them scram helping them, but still want them to stay close for now. So gotta face the spoopy for now. Get old man friend to direct me to someone willing to lend a gun, old rifle, Ithaca, I think, not a gun person. Works though, let friend know that if he needs out, got his back, same time, old man is getting increasingly agitated. Looks like he wants to tell me something, but pride, Panji. Next night at the bar, old man isn't there. Talking to one of his friends, I've started to get to know people. Tells me that old man is worried about his friend on reserve, lives near the two who were killed, worried the killer is gonna get him next, head back to the house early. Find old man coming down from an attic I didn't know he had. Looks suspicious. Bump, ask him what's up, ask for honesty. Being me, offer help genuinely. I'm the helping sort of guy as evidenced by presence far up north to help friend with GF. Tells me that, yeah, he's worried, but nothing he can do, and not to worry. Sure.jpg comma sleep light that night. Before bed, phone friend. Tells me that the entire reserve is getting weirdly hostile. Everyone notices it, but can't help it. Normally very nice, peaceful people, in touch with nature and that sheet. But unease is growing, gnawing, something is off. Makes me nervous too. Sleep with gun next to bed. Safety on off. Middle of the night. Hear old man walking around above, leaving the house, decided to follow. Don't want anything to happen to him. I'm not unskilled at woodsmanship. Can move quietly, carefully. One of my best skills really. Not that it matters. Old man is half deaf at the best of times and is staggering like he's pretty drunk. Follow him out. Take rifle, of course. Notice he doesn't have his, stay pretty far behind him, to be less easy to hear, see, and because bad feeling is setting in, heading towards reserve, by way of skirting town, worry that cops might see me sneaking around with a rifle, following a dude. But honestly, would rather explain myself than get caught out here without it. It's quite the walk, maybe an hour and a half. We get about 50 minutes before he stops. Pulls two things out of shirt. Can't see either. Stay back in deep bushes. Ready gun. Stay very quiet. Old man calls out. Not to me. It's an old language. One of the few I don't know well enough to at least understand. I'm an amateur, but enthusiastic linguist in spare time. Waits for a response. 10, 15 minutes. Getting cramped where I'm sitting. Then it shows up. No dramatic scent of blood or iron. No spooky repeated voice. Just an animalistic figure actually not unlike OP's image. Though not quite, and not rotting. An arm's a normal size, shimmering in the air behind it. Shaped like invisible wings made of dead branches. Like a heat shimmer, but better defined. Entire thing is vaguely luminescent. Entire thing is also, in a way that's hard to describe, very, very wrong. Nagoshi is hovering about a foot in the air, Glides along when it moves, with an unconcerned grace that conflicts with the world around it. This thing is not from here, this thing should not be here. Brain is having a little fight with itself. Instinct is to run like a spooked rabbit. But I'm paralyzed by indecision. Besides, as mentioned, have in my nature a tendency to help people and get the sense that old man is going to need help soon. Old man speaks to it again, 
and it answers in an odd and deep but not inhuman voice. Answers in English too, which weirds me out more. Addresses old man by name, starts moving towards him. He tosses something at it. Here, take it back, ignores him, and the thrown item, old man takes a step back, brings up pistol, duck if I know what kind. Didn't even know he had one. Almost get my own gun ready here. But stay frozen. Old man puts every bullet he has into this thing. Surprisingly calm, good aim. Thing does not care in the slightest. Does not move aside from continuing to approach him. When he's out of bullets, he throws the gun at it. Doesn't even duck. Old man looks at it, droops a bit. I guess that's it then. Nagoshi leans in towards him, teeth rippling oddly in a smile. Yes. Nagoshi leans down to retrieve the thrown object from near its feet, examines it as old man is lifted from the ground and torn apart instantaneously. Most excruciatingly gross thing I've ever seen. Wants so bad to do something, but duck. What underscore even underscore do dot jpg dot. Stay hidden as best as can. Almost stop breathing entirely. Nagoshi examines the thing old man, rip, threw at it. A small stone maybe was too far away to see right. Bits of old man settled to the ground. Looks like he was ripped inside out and then cut into half inch wide cubes over the course of maybe a moment. Don't want that to happen to me. Stay still, stay quiet. Don't pray because the only gods left here are maimed or malicious. Eventually it hovers away. Watch as it does. Trees, hills, everything just bends away to make room casually manipulating reality without any visible effort or motion. Or perhaps that is just how reality interacts with it without any prompting. Either way, not something I want to tangle with. Stay there until almost morning. Go back to the house, sleep out of sheer exhaustion, return gun to the guy I borrowed it from, call friend, at reserve. Everyone seems to be feeling better. GF's parents decide that now is the time for friend and his GF to leave. I'll come pick them up. Only stop on the way is to report to the police that old man is missing. Don't think they'll find anything because A. He got really minced compared to the others and B. Was way out in the middle of nowhere, GTFO. Never go back. So the moral of the story is that true Nagoshi are not to be ducked with in any way, shape or form. Any questions? Do you think the Nagoshi knew you were there but didn't care? Fuck. I have no clue. It didn't show any sign of acknowledging me, so... Important part was not being dead, Desu. Though, given what I know of them now, having done some travel research of my own, it seems unlikely that it knew I was there. Those things take many interesting capabilities from their old sponsor, but increased senses were not, to the best of my knowledge, one of them. No need to see better when you can already locate whatever you are interested in inherently. You said you did some research. What do you think the old man offers at the Ducker? Why was everyone agitated when the Ducker was around? Why did it stop after killing the old man? I mean, I'm pretty sure he'd stolen something from it. Or had something that had been stolen from it. They're reclusive things at the best of times and normally stick far down south. They're leftovers from a long gone age. The most succinct way I've heard it described, if perhaps not the most accurate, is that they were divine messengers to the civilization that lived in North America before the modern natives slash Indians slash First Nations etc. murdered the sheet out of it. Or rather, they're what's left of those messengers because most have offed themselves out of boredom and loneliness, and only the really twisted or devout ones hung around. And of those, the ones that make their presence known are the twisted ones. As for the feelings of agitation, I've heard that they apply the effect to nearby humans to make obvious the hierarchy of those present. In effect, them, their feet, the dirt on their feet, you. I don't know why it stopped. I guess maybe this was one of the less violent ones and just wanted its thing back. Did you try to search what was the object thrown? Duck no ha ha, when I got up I booked it. I wouldn't have anyways because it took the thing with it. Sorry that wasn't clear in the way I wrote it. So, what was the name of the reserve in the village? Fuck if I remember the name of the reserve. Never really went over there. And those things are functionally unpronounceable half the time anyways, even to me. The town had some name like person name, creek or something, Sheldon maybe. 
everyone just called it town, as opposed to the reserve. I got the feeling there was a story behind that. Like maybe the guy it was named after was a dick or something, but I didn't stick around long enough to find out. To get there, you took the highway up to Watson Lake and then cut off onto a smaller highway heading north for almost a day, then turned right onto another highway. It was a pretty small place, barely enough to merit a full-time policeman. Actually, it was sort of odd. I think most of those northern towns generally just use the RCMP. Maybe it's because the reserve was up there, or some holdover from gold rush days. Anand stated earlier in the thread that Flint works on them. Know anything about that? Not that I'm aware of. It's possible that it's something unique to a particular Nagoshi, like part of a deal it made with the local community or something. Some of them were known to do stuff like that. The ones that like to hunt try to make a game of it, and a game's only fun if the other player has a chance. 